Today I'm going to share with you my humble experience on the Fujifilm X-T4 after using it for about 4 months. Before I'm going to start though, a quick disclaimer, this video is mainly targeted towards videographers and not photographers, and also when I say videographers, I don't mean people who shoot weddings or professional gigs or documentaries. The only thing that I'm doing with this camera with the Fujifilm X-T4 is filming my YouTube videos and this is exactly who I am targeting, just content creators, YouTubers. So if you want to know more in-depth professional information for photography or videography, I would suggest to watch another video. With that being said, let's start. So for those of you who don't want to watch the entire video, let me summarize quickly my opinions on the Fujifilm X-T4. I think it's a great camera. I think it's the best APS-C camera on the market. It has great colors, great IBIS, great battery life. I don't really regret my purchase. I'm enjoying using this camera and I'm gonna keep using it for the next two or three years, maybe even four years, who knows. I think for $1,700, you're getting a great deal from Fujifilm. Yes, it has some downsides like the HDMI port, autofocus and the grip is not the best on the market. But overall, it's a great package for the price. You're getting great features, great camera for $1,700 and I'm really enjoying it. With that being said, let me go a little bit more in depth and share with you what I dislike about this camera first and then I'm gonna share with you what I really like about the Fujifilm X-T4. So the first thing that I dislike about the Fujifilm X-T4 is the micro HDMI port, which is really annoying for a couple of reasons. Number one is because it looks really similar to the USB-C port. Happened to me many times that I was trying to plug a cable, an HDMI cable into my camera, and I was getting confused between the USB-C port and the micro HDMI port. And the second reason is when you plug a cable, a micro HDMI cable to the camera, it feels really flimsy, the port feels really flimsy because it's so small and tiny. It just feels, it does not feel professional at all in my personal opinion. I would really like to have a full-sized HDMI or at least the mini HDMI port which feels much more solid than the micro HDMI port on the Fujifilm X-T4. Next thing is the crappy grip on the Fujifilm X-T4 which does not feel solid at all in my personal opinion, especially when you film handheld videos with your camera. The grip just does not give you confidence holding the camera, it does not feel solid as with my previous camera, for example, I had the Canon 77D DSLR camera, and on that camera, the grip was really solid. I could hold the camera with one hand. Even with a big lens, it felt really, really solid in the hand, and I was always confident holding my camera and shooting videos, but with the Fujifilm X-T4, I just don't really feel confident holding the camera in my hands and really shooting my videos, especially if I want to shoot something with one hand. But it's a quick fix. You can buy a grip extension like I have. I have the small rig grip extension. And with this grip extension, the camera feels really solid right now. But again, you have to invest a little bit more if you want to get the best grip possible out of your camera. And I'm going to leave a link down below for that small rig a grip extension if you want to purchase it for your Fujifilm X-T4. So the grip is not the best on the Fujifilm X-T4. Maybe for photography it's gonna be a little bit better, but for video, I don't think it's the best grip out there on the market. And now the next one is a pretty big one and that's autofocus. The autofocus on the Fujifilm X-T4 is not 100% solid like on Canon or Sony, for example. It's like 90 to 95% there, but sometimes you're gonna get a couple of hunts in some situations. At the moment, for example, I'm using the Fujifilm 16 to 55 f2.8 uh, to film this video, and I'm using the face tracking autofocus, and as you can see, everything is working well. You can move to the side. Okay, it's tracking me very well. But for example, one thing that I noticed is that if I'm gonna film with this uh, lens and camera outside, and I'm going to wear my sunglasses, it's gonna stop tracking my face. I don't have the box anymore on the screen. And because of that, it's gonna start hunting. I don't know if it's hunting right now, I can't really see. Maybe it is, maybe not. Basically, the box disappears on my face and also on my eyes, obviously because I have sunglasses on. And now the last thing is the annoying H.265 codec, which requires some uh, beefy machines, beefy computers to edit. Personally, I'm using the iPad Pro 
to edit all of my videos and the H.265 codec works just fine on my iPad Pro. With LumaFusion I have no issues at all. But if you have a low spec computer, it's gonna be pretty much a nightmare to edit the H.265 footage. You can obviously film in H.264 rather than H.265 to make it easier on your machine, but then you're not gonna get the highest quality 10-bit uh, video. So the codec is a little bit annoying on some machines. You can connect a Ninja Vim, film in ProRes, that's gonna make it a lot easier on your machine, or you can convert the H.265 files to proxies, and that's gonna make it even easier on your machine, but then it's another step that you have to take to edit your footage. So the H.265 is a little bit annoying, but if you have a modern computer, you probably won't have any problems. And that's pretty much it. That's what I dislike about this camera. Uh, the micro HDMI port, the grip, the autofocus, and the H.265 files. Also, there is no headphone jack on the camera, which is not really a big problem because you get a USB-C to a headphone jack. And for some reason, I can't find a way to remove the doors from the HDMI and USB-C port. I want to completely remove them, but I can't really. I have to open the camera, I guess. If you know how to remove these doors, let me know down below. But that's pretty much what I dislike about the Fujifilm X-T4. Now let me talk about what I like about the Fujifilm X-T4. First thing that I like about the Fujifilm X-T4 are the colors. The colors are absolutely phenomenal on this camera. At the moment I'm shooting in classic chrome film simulation with no color grading or color adjustment in post-production. This is straight out of camera and I think this footage looks absolutely great. And this was one of the main reasons why I bought this camera because I don't really like to do color grading that much. I want to get my shots as fast as possible, to edit as fast as possible. And I don't really like to color grade my image. I like to get a good, pleasing image straight out of camera. And the Fujifilm X-T4 does not disappoint at all. You have many film simulations to choose from. My favorite ones are Classic ROM, Eterna, and once in a while I use F-Log. I actually want to start using F-Log more and more because I want to kind of learn how to manipulate F-Log and how to use it for the best. But for the most part, I'm shooting either in Classic Chrome or Eterna with minimal color adjustments in post-production and the footage looks absolutely great in my personal opinion. So if you want a camera that has great colors out of camera and you don't want to do anything in post-production, Fujifilm X-T4 is a great option to consider. Next thing that I like about the Fujifilm X-T4 is the image quality. The image quality looks absolutely great. From this camera, it looks really sharp and has a lot of detail in it, especially if you pair it with the right lens. At the moment, I'm using the Fujifilm X-T4 with the 16-55, and I think this combo is really great for YouTube if you want to get good versatility, good autofocus, and also great image quality all at once one. So I'm not really disappointed by the image quality of this camera. Next thing is iBase. The iBase on the Fujifilm X-T4 is great if you want to use it for B-roll shots with 4K60 or 4K24 with some slow hand movements like left and right, up and down or whatever angle. But if you're going to use it for vlogging, obviously it's not going to work well because you're going to see some movement in the corners if you're going to film with a wide angle lens. But for B-roll shots, 4K60 B-roll shots, it's going to be more than enough, especially if you're going to pair the IBIS with a image stabilized lens from Fujifilm. It's going to work really, really well. I am not disappointed by the IBIS at all. Next thing is battery. The battery life on the Fujifilm X-T4 is great. I usually get around one hour of 4K24 recording, which is good enough in my personal opinion. It's not bad at all. With my previous Canon camera, I was getting around 30 minutes of 1080p recording with that battery. And with this camera, I'm getting high quality image in 4K and I get around one hour of recording, which is really awesome. And also if I need more power, I can plug in a power bank with fast PD charger to the Fujifilm X-T4, charge my battery, and at the same time, power on my camera. And now the next thing is flippy screen. And I love the flippy screen on the Fujifilm X-T4 because it helps me to shoot in my videos. I shoot all my videos by myself. So now I can monitor myself. I can see that I'm in focus. I can see that I'm properly exposed. I can see the zebras. I can see everything with the flippy screen. Without the flippy screen, it would be really, really annoying. Although I'm using an external monitor, having the flippy screen is so handy for shooting videos and especially when you're shooting yourself for YouTube videos or 
anything else. Okay, the next thing is reliability. The Fujifilm X-T4 is a really reliable camera. For the past four months, I've been using this camera to film all of my YouTube videos, and I've never had any issues when it comes to overheating, lagging, or bugs or something like that. The camera just works. Maybe if you're gonna shoot your videos outside in direct sunlight, you're gonna have some more overheating issues, but personally, I've never had any overheating problems and I filmed a couple of videos outside with no problems whatsoever. So the camera is really solid and really reliable. And I think this is pretty much it. This is what I like about the Fujifilm X-T4. Great colors, great image quality, reliable, good battery life, IBIS, and flippy screen. And obviously you have some small minor things like 10-bit, which I don't really use a lot because unfortunately, my iPad Pro or the iPad uh, does not support 10-bit footage yet. Soon LumaFusion is going to release an update with full 10-bit support. Maybe then I'm going to start using 10-bit for my Fujifilm X-T4. And also you can record externally 10-bit 4 to 2 with something like the Automos Ninja 5. And the build quality of the camera is really solid and great. And also the look of the camera. The camera looks absolutely phenomenal. It looks, it has a great mix between an old vintage camera look and a modern camera look. And I absolutely love how the camera looks with all the dials and modes. It's really great. And one more thing actually is that you have separate settings for photo and also for video. I like to have that because sometimes I like to do photography with different settings. And I love to do obviously video for different with different settings. So having the option to switch quickly between photo settings and video settings is really handy. Overall, in my opinion, the Fujifilm X-T4 is one of the best camera options out there, especially for the price. Yes, the autofocus performance is not the most reliable autofocus, like on Canon or Sony, but for $1,700, you get a lot of stuff. For the price, you get great colors, great image quality, great battery life, flippy screen, IBIS, 10 bit, good looking camera, and many other features. I love the Fujifilm X-T4, it's working really well for me to film my YouTube videos. If you are a YouTuber and you're considering buying the Fujifilm X-T4 to film your YouTube videos, I think you'll be more than pleased uh, with the Fujifilm X-T4. It's a really great camera, you won't be disappointed. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.